So that when you are talking about faith, I know that the Bible said in Hebrew 11 verse 1, now faith is the substance of things that we hope for and the evidence of things that we cannot see. That is true to even an unbeliever, to a layman, as long as you keep faith alive, you will always get there. But there is a faith that you don't have to keep anything alive. You just have to have Christ in you. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 2. The Bible said now in verse 2 of Hebrews 12. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down in the right hand of, of the throne of God. So, Christ becomes my faith. The other one, you have to motivate yourself, you have to believe the unbelievable, to keep faith alive, even when you are drowning in death, when you are losing your health, when things are going very south and bad. You have to keep keeping on. How many people can keep on that? But when you have Christ, you don't have to jack yourself up to anywhere. You just believe in him that he has the ability and he has the capacity and he can do it. The Bible says unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we think or ask according to the power that working in us. So Christ becomes my faith. That's why we sing my faith is in nothing less but Jesus Christ, my righteousness. I don't have faith in my ability. I don't have faith in my knowledge. I don't have faith in my strength. I don't have faith in my, uh, my capacity. My faith is Christ. So if Christ is my faith, I just have to put all everything on him. Because if I try to do it by the wisdom and the knowledge of God that I have, I can't. The Bible says not by power, not by might. It is by the Spirit. So this morning we are going to talk about the kingdom blessings. As the whole month of September will be a month of gratitude and the blessings of God and appreciation. We have to understand what that blessings are to us as children of God. Once you can be able to know something, then you can be able to duplicate it. You can be able to get it. You can be able to release it. You can be able to give it out. But if you don't know, that's why knowledge is very vital in this kingdom. The kingdom is a kingdom where you must know God, not by information that we know about Him. God is not in this Bible. We have read this Bible. The Bible will tell you about God, but that is not God. God has to be felt. You have to believe in Him. In through your emotions. That's where we connect. The Bible can give us a map on how to find God. You cannot read about God in any book and know Him. There must be an encounter for you to know Him. And that's why the Bible says that they that know the God that they serve, they shall be what strong and they shall be exploited. Because now you are entering into a place called eternity. In, in the book of John 17, verse 3, before we begin this morning, hallelujah, God is just taking care of the way. But that's good also. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 17, you see that the ability to know God introduces you into eternity automatically. Not by anything, you enter into eternity. You know, some people think you have to die to go to eternity. No, you can be in eternity here on earth. Read through and John chapter 17. Look at my story. Are we there? The Bible says, and this is eternal life. So, what is eternal life? Huh? That they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The only true God. I say there is only one God. There is no other God. God tell you that I am the Lord thy God. There is none beside me. Not that he is true. He is the only God. Every other thing you see is not a God. God created man to be a God here on earth also. So if we are operating in the God nature of a man, we are releasing his dimension in us. I told us about everything on earth has three dimensions. That's why you hear about the 3D. 
on earth is the length, the width, and the breadth. That's three dimensions. God gave man three dimensions authority. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. God said, Be fruitful, multiply, and pray the hands of you and have dominion. Over what? The fishes of the sea, that's aquatic. The fowls of the air, that's atmospheric. And over every creeping thing that created upon the earth, that's terrestrial. Those are three dimensions of man. Man is the man has his man is a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. Three dimensions. But God is the fourth dimension. The Holy Spirit. So the Bible, that's why the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord bear witness with my spirit that I am the Son of God. So anytime there is an empowerment from the fourth dimension, we are not ourselves anymore because it consumes you and he operates in you. That's why Jesus told them clearly in Luke 24. In verse 49, he said to them, carry you in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. Until you enter into the fourth dimension. Don't go anywhere. And they waited in Acts 1.8. He said, and you shall receive what? Power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Then you can now be witness both in Jerusalem and in Judea and to the uttermost part of the earth. So until you enter into the fourth dimension, whereby you die, even though you walk in the flesh, Paul said it this way, even though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal; they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 to 5. He said, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ and take it into captive. Even my thoughts can confuse you. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Sometimes you think something and you do you say, oh, but it just came to me. No, sometimes the devil is what telepathically programming things in our mind. That's why Romans said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, he said, transforming them by the renewal of your mind. Your mind has to be regenerated. It must be transformed. It must be transformed. When you get revelation, what revelation does is it transforms you. Transformation will take you from what you are to something that you will be. Then transformation is not just going to remain there. It has to cause a revolution. When you are transformed, you begin to move. You begin to do stuff. That's why when they say when people get knowledge, then they challenge authority. Because sometimes you didn't know that you are being tricked by the government or the county or the city where you are. The moment you go and get knowledge about what is going on, you go back and say, why should this be? And you start to, that's where people start to do collective bargaining. They can come together, they write out and all that, and they get policy change. Because now they know. Before, when they, they didn't know, in ignorance, the Bible says God overlooked. But ignorance of the law does not mean that the law does not exist. So that you don't know about something that don't mean that it's not there. You gotta know, and you shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. The Bible did not say it sets you free. When something is set, you don't have to do anything. It, it's just there. But when it makes you, you have to continue in that path. Because you are made, you operate in that function. Today, the truth shall be open to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible said, The entrance of the world giveth us what light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The kingdom blesses. What does that mean? Let's go to Romans chapter 14, verse 17. You will understand what the kingdom is not. Because for you to know what you want, you have to know what you don't want. Many times people say, I don't want this, I don't want this. And you say, What do you want? They don't they, they can't say anything. 
Because they are so consumed with what they don't want than to know what they want. And if you don't know what you want, you may never get it. That's why I see people talk about sin and the consciousness of sin. As you continue to say it will not make it to leave. You have to do something about it. Some people say, oh, I don't want useless men. Every time I go out, the men that approach me, they are so useless. That, and you keep saying it, the only people you see are useless men. Or the same thing with men. Talking about there is no woman out there for marriage. I was actually a young man. He has gone everywhere. He has traveled to his country. He has come back. He said, I couldn't find a wife. I said, because you are not looking well. You keep seeing every woman in the presence of your former marriage. So it will not work. If you don't remove your eyes from negativity, you cannot see positive. That's right. You have to be open to be able to see something in a different way. In fact, there's a way I put it. When you change the way you are looking at anything in life, the thing you are looking at begins to change. Yes. But many of us, we have prejudice in us. Human beings have it. We already said this thing has to be like this. So even when we know that that thing is not that way, we want to make it to be what we have thought in our mind. To, for it to be. And we just keep saying, this is what it is. And somebody says, no, that's not. Look at it again. So you have to look again. You have to look again the second time. You have to look the third time. And you keep looking until you start to see change. Hallelujah. God is going to give us wisdom today. Amen. So look at the book of Romans 14. Hallelujah. Right. In verse 17, talking about the kingdom of God. Verse 17. The Bible said here. What is 17? Okay, see, for the kingdom of God is not what? Eating and drinking. That does not mean that we don't eat in the kingdom. In fact, the Bible said the apostles, every time they meet, what they do, there's what you call the apostles' doctrine. Who can tell me what the apostles' doctrine is? Breaking bread and wine. These guys were eating all the time. The Bible says, and they continued in the apostles' doctrine of breaking bread and wine. In fact, when God met Abraham, Genesis 22, the first thing God came with, God came with bread and wine. So he came to Abraham as a, a king, and Abraham saw him, and they sat down, God brought out bread and brought out wine. And they broke bread and wine, and they ate. And he said, Blessed be Abraham, possessor of heaven and earth. And he spoke to Abraham and he left. So we eat in this kingdom, but that does not mean that that is all what the kingdom can offer. The Bible says the kingdom is not drinking and eating, even though it's part of it. But it is what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. These are what the kingdom is made up of. God cannot change his nature. God is a righteous God. Amen. God cannot change that. Yes. I don't care how. Some people say, don't worry, our God will come to where we are now. The world is changing, so God has to change. No. God, God is righteousness. Yes. And God is justice. And the word peace in Hebrew is called shalom. And shalom is not just peace. Shalom is bigger than peace. It's called blessings. So the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and blessings Amen. and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's why the Jews, the greeting of the Jew, every Jewish person that meets as another Jew, they say, Shalom. They tell the person, blessings to you, and the person has to return that blessing, say, Shalom. The Muslims do the same thing because it comes from the Abrahamic covenant. They say, Salam Aleikum, which is blessings also. And the other person will say, Maleku Salam, give you back the blessing. So, but in English, they translate it to peace. Peace is just one part of blessings. You have it all. Thank you, Jesus. So, now we know what the kingdom is. It's righteousness, it is peace, which is blessings, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost. But now, how do we get it? Matthew chapter 6, 33. When you seek for something, it's not just you wait for it to happen. I see people give God time and want God say, I, I, I'm, I'm giving from now to December. If you don't show up, who are you? 
you come but and seek him. You search for him. And a lot of Christians fall into it. Even pastors say, I've been waiting upon the Lord for the past five days. I have told him in prayers, if he doesn't do this by this time, what will happen? God can live forever. You can die very soon. So if you say, give him time, God says, let's wait. And you will expire. After a while, you have expired on earth. But he is almighty. He continues to stay. So what do you do? You seek him. You go after him. You chase him. The Bible says, Jesus said, Matthew 6, 33, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything will now begin to run after you. As you run after God. Because seeking God is not sitting in your heart. Say, God, this is, you know my address. If you don't want to come, don't worry. I'm going to be here. I give you till 5 o'clock. If you don't show, then I'm done with you. God will not come. Who are you to command him? You go after him. And you keep going. You keep going. Jesus gave us a format to receive from God. And a lot of Christians read that. And we just pass by. When you talk about the wicked John. I think this is Luke. Luke 11. I want us to see it. Talk about the wicked judge. That was God. Say, my, 
My husband died and the people are coming to take our land. Come and avenge for us. The judge will look at the woman and say, what is wrong with her? But the Bible says every day the woman continues to sit at the gate. And the judge will now say, if I don't help this woman, she will worry me. And the judge will go and do what? Help that woman. And the God, Jesus now said, will God not hear the very elect if he continue to come? He's not seeking God. You seek him today and you don't get to hear from him. You say, well, God is on vacation. God cannot go on vacation. Sometimes God wants to see how desperate do you really want this thing? How far do you need it? I want you to show me that you really want this thing, that you need this thing that you're asking. And many of us, we fall that here and it's like God cannot answer. You have to throw the kitchen sink on him. Continue to come. Look at God give us a format. In Isaiah 62. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 62. I want you to see something here. If you look at verse 6 and 7, I talk about this every time we pray about the, the, the gate keepers, watchmen, that watch cities. If you look at verse 6, God said, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall neither hold their peace, day or night. There's what we call the watchers and watchmen. Some of us are watchers and we are watchmen. If you are a watcher, God cannot do anything around you without letting you know. In fact, people cannot die around you without you know. There's other people that you know. God will reveal it to you. When God wanted to do what he wanted to do, he told the Bible, he said, I cannot do this wicked thing without telling my friend Abraham. Abraham was not just a watchman, but he was a watcher. He is over the whole realm of Jordan. All to Sodom and Gomorrah. Anything that happens there goes through him, spiritually. But now God is talking about watchmen. Watchmen are people that are always in the prayer. That's why God does not pray with the prayer warrior. These people are naked white. If you touch them, it will shock you. Because the currents of God is passing through them every call, every time. They are always in the presence of God. And you think that you see somebody, you don't know who they are, you don't know how many midnight candles they are burning, and you go to just to touch them. You'll be killed immediately. Because God doesn't joke with them. They are called watchmen. They are watching over this. Sometimes you see a city driving. And you're looking at people that have all the resources. It can be one man or two people in that city that keeps that city going. They are called watchmen. They are the ones that take charge of the spiritual territory of that community. So God is telling the prophet, say, I set watchmen upon the walls of Jerusalem. They don't hold their peace day and night. They, that means they burn the candle. Day, they are there, they are praying. At night, they are out. God knows who they are. Sometimes you don't know them. I heard a story of a, a young preacher that came to a city. And the city has been conquered by an old preacher. But this old preacher doesn't have anybody. These are people that have fought the demons and the powers of the city. He has just a very small local church. So the young man came and started the church in the city and the church began to grow exponentially. So he began to talk rashly and talk tough and was telling somebody, say, look at that preacher. When I was still a child, I knew about him and I came here, he's not giving anything. Look at him, there's nobody there. He didn't know that the preacher was the one holding the whole city, that the lamb of that city. So when he went into crisis, he ran everywhere, went to his spiritual father, went to people. And God told them to tell him to go and apologize to that preacher. The preacher did not know when he made that comment. So he was saying, God, what has I done to the man? I don't even know him. God said, this man is the one holding the city. That your ministry is growing is him. Because all the forces of the city knows him. He's the one fighting the battle for the community. And you are now thriving. It's like when you see a first son in the family. Most first son and first daughters know what I'm saying. The devil marked you to destroy you because... You are the first. So they see you as a leader. They come and reach on you and fight you for. And you will keep fighting back. And your younger ones are thriving. They are moving forward. They are doing well. Then one day, the foolish leader will look at you and say, Look at my senior sister. 
She doesn't know anything. Everything she thought never worked. The devil has been fighting that person from the time they were born because they were born as leaders. And because the devil overlooked you because responsibility was not upon you. Because royalty is from bad. So when somebody is born a leader, you are mad. That's why you have to dedicate your four sons and their four daughters to God. God said, that is my portion. It's like a tithe to God. He said, everything that opened the womb is mine. It's God's own. If they don't serve God, they'll be useless. I don't care what they know. I don't care what they do. Because the devil will fight them tooth and nail. So God said they were watchmen in this city. But that's not where I'm going. Where I'm going is the persistence in verse 7. Are you looking at verse 7? He said, I have set watchmen upon that was for Jerusalem that shall neither hold their peace day or night. Look at you who make mention of the Lord. Do not keep silent. God is saying, if you have made mention of me, keep not silent and give him no rest. Do you see it in your Bible? If God said, give him no rest, why should I rest? He said, until I establish him, until I make Jerusalem the place of death. So until God has fulfilled his word in my life, he's not resting. He said, all you that make mention of the Lord, keep not what? Silent and give him no rest. That means God cannot rest until I become who that he has said I will be. Until I see the glory of God upon my life, there is no rest for heaven. I will keep coming morning, afternoon and night. I will knock on that door many times. I will sit at the gate, do vigil at the gate of heaven. Continue, God will say until say, settle that place, settle that family, settle that person. Then that is when they will have it. Have you understand how to get in this kingdom? When we're talking about the kingdom blessings, it will not fly according to your house. Even if the blessings of God is rested upon your family, if you don't go and fight it out, you will not become it. Judah was named the king from the time their father died. Jacob called all his 12 sons. And when he came to Judah, Judah was Reuben, Simeon, Levi. Judah was number four. Jacob made Judah his first son. He said, The scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh. What happened? The sons of Judah died in front of Judah. So that that, that prophecy will not come. The sons were doing something that was not right. Withdrawing it from their wife. Instead of the, them to sow their seed into their wife, they will withdraw. God killed them. Now Judah discovered he has no son anymore. And one of the wives of the son of Judah went and positioned herself as a harlot. And her father in law came upon her. And that's how Perez and the Zara was born. They continued that lineage. 10 generations to have a David in that family. If you read from Zara and Perez, it took 10 generations for one king was produced from Judah. In all these 10 generations, the devil fought this family because their father has said, the scepter authority shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh. So the devil said, wow, Judah, you are in trouble. Every Judah was a promiscuous woman. In promiscuous man, they were running the street, they were very, very promiscuous because of the promise of God upon their life. How would you discover that the lot of prophets are very, very promiscuous? Because when the prophecy comes upon you and the anointing of the prophetic era, the devil will fight it to destroy it. Your battle is not because of who you are, it's because of what you represent. Everybody fight the battle based on what is in their bloodline, what they are carrying, what is in their DNA, what they are representing spiritually. When David was not anointed a king, he never saw a lion, neither did he saw a bear take his sheep. But once the oil of God came upon him from Prophet Samuel, the Bible said there was a bear that came and took one of his sheep. The bear was not after that she was the, after the life of David. If this guy will be the next king, we better kill him now. So he killed the bear. Now the lion came. Where did the lion come from? David had been taking sheep out in that community. 
never saw a lion or a bear. But after the oil came upon him, there was a lion and a bear. And the next thing was a Goliath challenged Israel. They used to have a treaty that they would not fight each other. But all of a sudden, Goliath rose up against Israel because there was a David in their midst. Sometimes when you see battles, begin to look around you. Begin to see there's a destiny that is about to hatch. Come out. The devil has seen it. So the devil will begin to attack so that you get hooked on the attack and you lose the blessings. The blessings of God does not come like gold and silver. It comes like work. You know how you see the workmen dressed on overall with their hammers and spanners and all that. Blessings come that way. So many Christians, when they see work coming from in front of them or warfare, they will run away. Or trouble, they will avoid it. And that's where your blessing is. Blessing comes like work. It comes like trouble. It comes like challenge. But you have to look deeper to understand spiritually what is this battle for? Is it just a regular battle or is this battle for a winning? And God will tell you the truth. Hallelujah. Matthew 16 verse 16. When Jesus was talking to the disciples now, Peter was, his eyes of understanding was enlightened there. And Peter saw who Jesus was in the spirit. Let's read Matthew 11 first. Matthew 11, 25. Then we are going to go back to that Matthew 60 because that will introduce us to what I'm trying to tell us now. Matthew chapter 11, look at verse 25. Said, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the prophets and have revealed them to this. So God revealed he, he, who Christ was to the wise. If Jesus Christ, if the, if the power of God was revealed to the world, we will not be the ones worshiping God. All the rich people would take every church. But God hid it. The Bible said he hid it to the prudent and to the wise. I see people that are professors of Christian religious knowledge, PhD holders, they can't even understand the Bible. They talk about the Bible as a history book. And Bible characters are saying that just was a fiction for morality. They don't understand the revelation in the world. What we talk about is Renan, not Logos. So, Jesus was saying that if this was just anything, anybody would have had it, but God hid it. Did you see it in verse 25? He said, at this time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have given these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to me. Now, let's see Matthew 16, 16. You will not understand when Peter knew who Jesus was in the spirit because he has not told them who he was. Jesus knew that it was not from Peter. This was coming from heaven directly. Matthew 16, verse 16. When you were asking them, who do men say that I am? They said, oh, people say you are Elijah, you are Jeremiah, you are one of the prophets. He said, now, who do you say that I am? And these people have been following him maybe for one year, two years. They don't know who he was. And there was quiet in the room. Now, Peter said something in verse 16. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, the son of Jonah, by the way, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So Peter did not get that revelation from any man because Jesus had not even told them, and nobody on earth knew who he was at that time. So when Peter said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus knew this is coming directly from something was downloaded to him. He said, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to me, but my Father, which is in heaven. We know God by revelation. God will reveal himself to you. 
But how do you get that revelation? You can't stay where and get it. You have to be close. You have to keep coming. You have to keep coming. Do you know what it took? In Genesis 26, Isaac would be probably 65, 70 years old. That was when God revealed himself to him. Isaac was born as a promised child to Abraham. And all his life, you would think that he has known God. He has been with his father. His father almost killed him, being sacrificed to this God. He has seen his father worship this God, praise this God. His father has told him encounters with God. But until there was a famine in his life, in Genesis 26, and Isaac was about to go to Egypt, and God came to that, to him that night and said, I am the Lord thy God, the God of thy father, Abraham. He said, sojourn in this land, and I will be with you. And God began to tell him, I will make your seed to be as the stars of the sky and as the sun of the earth, if you will do this. And God began to reveal himself to him. And Isaac woke up from that revelation, refused to go out, stayed in the land of Gilead, and began to dig well. And so did that. And in the same year, God blessed him. The Bible says he became so rich that the king was envious of him. But it took all these years for him to have that revelation. Even though he goes to church, but probably has an altar, make sacrifice, but until God reveals himself, he can't know God. So your ability to know him is by revelation, but you must be around. The Bible says in the book of Romans 10, 17, it says that faith coming by what? Hearing. And by hearing the word. You can't hear the word if you are in the nightclub. You can't hear the word if you are out there in the street. Who will tell you of the word? In fact, the word is so scarce now. Even though it is always available. It's on our phones. It's everywhere. You can dial any number and get a preaching. But how many people do that? You have to be close. You have to keep coming. That's why you have to seek him. Why is available? Seeking Jesus Christ. Every day. Jesus says, seek you first. The kingdom and its righteousness and blessings and riches and wealth and long life and prosperity and good health shall be added up. Those things are addition. Don't push for addition. How many of you have seen where they say buy one and get one free? And you walk into the store and say, Hey, I want to get the free one. They won't talk to you. You have to buy one first and you get one free. The only way you get the blessings of God is when you get the kingdom. Hallelujah. Seek you first the kingdom and his righteousness, and everything good house, good wife, good children, good husband will be those are additions. So you can't walk and say, God, give me the addition, and that's what many of us are doing. And you keep chasing the bag, and people have been running chasing the bag, and you hear everywhere, Oh, you gotta chase the bag. You have to do that. You chase the bag till you expire. You couldn't get it. The bag is closed, but you can't get it. You keep looking at it, it, it looks very close, but you can't touch it. You keep chasing it and you keep chasing it. Just chase God. And the bag will begin to chase you. The good life you have been looking for will follow you on its own. That's the kingdom blessings. When you have Christ, you have it all. With God, all things are what? Possibility is in God. Hallelujah. You get to the place where God has decided to put himself in you. In Jeremiah 31 verse 33, the Bible says, I will put my laws inside of you. It will be embedded. You know what is embedment? In IT, you just put something into something. It will be embedded in you. Jeremiah 31. Look at verse 33 and 34. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 33. The Bible says here, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those things, says the Lord. I will put my word, laws in their mind and write it in their heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. But if Israel rejected God with this, no more shall every man teach his neighbor. And every man his brother say, Know the Lord, for they shall all for they all shall know me from the least to them that are great, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquities and their sins, and I will remember it no more. That's the intention of God. To 
will make us his own. That will put my laws in your heart. You don't have to hear preaching to know. It will just automatically be inside of you. But we will take it. And Christ has to come. And the Bible says in John chapter 1 verse 12, as many as receive him, then he gave the power to become the sons of God. So now it's become optional. Before God said, it's going to be composed that I will put my laws, I will put myself inside of you. That you don't have to hear the word to come to me. You just know me. And Israel said, no. God said, well, now you have to see me. Are we ready to come to Jesus? To walk in the blessings of God. Things you will be sleeping in your house, God will give you an idea. And that idea is not, you don't have to have money to execute it. God will set up the people that will back you up with that idea. And when you come out, those things will begin to happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at it. That was the book I was looking for before. The woman that Jesus was talking about, the woman and the judge. Luke 18. We have read Luke 11 about the friendship. But look at the judge. God is a righteous judge, but you have to keep coming to him. If you don't find a case, the judge will not just come and help you. You have to go and make that case known to God. The Bible said in Luke 18, and he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to what? Pray and nothing. So prayer is a compulsory. Prayer is not optional. God said, men ought always to pray and not faint. And he began to tell you how. How do you get the result? He said, there is a certain city, a judge, who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God, nor, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her by her continually coming to worry me. And verse 6. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect who carry out they who cry out day and night to him. Though he bear long with them, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? That's a question now. They shall not go avenge his own very late. And you know the condition to pray, the least you can pray is twice a day. Day and night. You must cover these two powerful entities. And day and night is controlled by the sun and the moon. That's why David prayed one prayer that cover all of them. He said, the sun shall not smite me by day or the moon by night. So he has taken over time. You must come to God in the morning and at night. That's the minimum. So if you're doing once a day, then you are, you are still having deficit of prayer. Then you can up it to three times a day. You can up it to four times. The Jews pray five times a day. It's compulsory. It's like a religion to them. Five times a day they have to pray. It doesn't matter where they are. Muslims pray, I think, three times a day. For me, Muslims pray five times, the Jews pray three times. You see, even if they are on the street, they will roll out their mat and put it on it and kneel down and begin to pray. And we Christians, some people cannot even pray once a day. We only pray when we think that. Yeah, we are stuck. So, God, where are you? God becomes a spare time. That's why God is treating us like a spare time. You know, many of you have never seen your spare time. Some of you will drive up your car. As long as you drive it, sell the car, never pull the spare time. But there's a spare time again. Until you have a tire puncture. Then you need to look around. Where's my spare time? Waving everybody. People will come and say, What do you want? I can't find the spare time. And somebody that's experienced will not go to the trunk and open it and say, There's the donut tire again. You know, for that's the way we find God. When we are stressed, we are stuck on the road, we can't get to our appointment. You say, God, what are you? Why are you so late? I've been here for two hours. You have not showed up. And all that. Those things doesn't, doesn't move God. You don't
don't have to react to God. Go to God when things are good. Say, Lord, I thank you. Sometimes you don't go there and tell him anything. Just say, Lord, I just came to say thank you. For life. Even if you don't do anything for me again for the rest of my life, I just want to thank you. I'm grateful. I am grateful. I appreciate the life that you gave to me. I appreciate where you have taken me how far. With all the trials and challenges that I have, I say thank you. Because some people are dead. They can't even be alive to tell you thank you. But I am among the living. You talk to God that way. And you, many of us, if you go and look at your prayer radar, it's give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me for, you pray one million times, it's give me. God is not for the Christmas. He has set things in place. You go to him and you appreciate him first. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How about good morning, Holy Spirit? Good morning, Father. Thank you for waking me up today. Before you get to your name, if you say how Jesus put that prayer, if you break it down, say, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. Now, the fourth part is in give us this day. And when you're asking, some of us ask for 10 years. Ask him for today. The blessings of today, give it to me. The health of today, the business of today, the appointment for today, everything is daily. Because God wants you to ask him again tomorrow. Yeah. He wants you to ask him next tomorrow. Yeah. He doesn't want you to ask him for 10 years and you just go away say, I'm taking care of the next 10 years. Even though he can give you the blessings of 10 years now, but he wants you to come daily. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, I think Luke 9, 23, or Luke 23, verse 9, let him carry his cross daily and follow me. The cross is daily. It's not sometimes you carry cross and sometimes you don't. It is every day you carry a cross and you keep walking. You keep walking in that path. And God is going to continue to make it perfect. The Bible says the path of the just. Proverbs chapter 4, 18. It's like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. Why can't God make that light to shine once? No. He has to allow the light to shine. Every day there is illumination. Your light continues to grow. Maybe your light started as a candle light. Before it goes, it gets to the bulb light. And you keep going. It will get to the place where it's like a sunlight. That the light is shining around the whole place. If you enter a city, in the whole of that city, there will be light because of you. Let your light so shine that men shall see thy good works Amen. and give glory to thy Father. The blessings that is in this kingdom is in Christ. We just have to have Him to have that blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. We just have to have Him to receive that blessings. We just have to have Him to be blessed tremendously. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, la cara marica. We don't have time. It's a lot to say. But I'm just going to try to wrap up now. Let's go to John chapter 3. And we're going to read John chapter 8. And we're going to wrap up. John chapter 3. Jesus was talking about a man that had every resources, capacity. This man was wearing many hats. As the Bible introduced him here in John chapter 3. Verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees, so he was a man. He was a Pharisee, that's the title so that he had. His name was what? Nicodemus, that's number three. He was a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know, we, who is we? He was coming alone, but they have discussed about Jesus in the high places. Yeah. So he was coming, they said, you, you are a religious person, you are a bishop, go ask him. So he came on behalf of the group. That's why he said to him, we, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no man can do these things that you do, except God is with him. And Jesus said to him, Jesus did not answer all those salutations. Most of the time, people want to praise you for you to make a mistake. The man was coming to say, oh, Rabbi, we know. Jesus did not go there. Jesus told him the key. He said, except the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom. The man was confused. With all his time, he didn't know about that. He could almost say to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 
And verse 5, Jesus said, No, no, assuredly I say unto you, unless a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. So the first place is to see. Many of us, we are in the place of seeing. Born again is the lowest level of Christianity. If you have been born again for 20 years, you need to, you need deliverance. Because a child that is 20 years and still a child, that means that child is, is malfunctioning, mal malnutrition. That child is not growing. He has to grow to the place of you are born of the water and of the spirit. That is when you begin to search the word. The water is the word of God. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. That means when you come and speak, everywhere is wet. When you come to a dry place, after you leave that place, you begin to vegetate and things will begin to happen because you have water in you. There is water in your desert. So you have to be born of the water, which is the world, and the spirit. And look at the next level, which where we have to be. That is when you go to the verse 8, then you know that you have arrived. In verse 7, the Bible says, Do not marvel that I say you should. Say to you, you must be born again. Look at verse 8 now. That's the highest level. The wind blows where it wishes, and we hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So you start with born again, a change of mind. Then you go to born of the water and of the Spirit. And you end up born of the Spirit. Now you are like a wind. You blow. People hear your sound. They don't know where you are coming from. They don't know where you are going. You cannot be held now. You must cannot trap you. Because you are a wind. The wind cannot be trapped. You are flowing through everything. You move like a, a, a radar. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. That man is a spiritual man. That is where everything answers to you. You are not operating in the three dimension. You are operating in the fourth dimension. The spirit of God bearing witness that you are a son, a daughter of God. It is whereby the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you are a witness both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Everywhere you appear, it's like somebody has seen God. Have you been in a place and you need somebody say, I felt something when he came into this place. I felt something when she came. Like, they knew that something has come in. Because you are not walking alone. You are walking with entities following you. You have become God on earth. We are not the God. We are a God. Every child of God is a God. God said in John chapter, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. He said, little children, don't you know that you are God? For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Yeah. So the God in you will begin to manifest. Many of us are still operating in the man, the Adamic nature. Adam is clear. Get out of Adam and be a God. That you can be a wind. That is where you can speak to the constellations. Say, son, I want you to stand still until I finish what I'm doing. The song is stand. You can still. Joshua was a man like me and you. He was a general, not even a priest. But at the time, he was fighting a battle and the sun was going down. He said, son, stand still until we finish for six hours. That's why September, not September, February happened. 29th. They lost about six or seven hours that day. So there's a leap here. It was because of Joshua's prayer. So February could not complete again. That hour that the sun stood cannot be calculated again. The sun was standing. Because the commandment has said, sun stand still until I finish what I'm doing. The sun stood. This is a man commanding the sun. God said, concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. You can't command if you are not operating in the dimension of God himself. You have to be in that place. Whereby the Bible says, we are raised with Christ and we are seated with him. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 1. In the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers. Amen. You are above everything. Amen. If you speak from there, John chapter 3, let me show you something. 3 times 1. That's saying John chapter 3. 31. Look at what Jesus said here. He said, he who comes from where? Above. Is what? Above all. 
Because we are still coming from the earth. So things will challenge you. They will give you the authority. But if you come from above, he said, He who comes from above is above all. You are above every trials, every that does not mean that they don't come. They will come, but you are above it. Challenges will come. Things will come to shape you. But you are above them. Above them all. Because you are coming from above. You are above all. The Bible does not say you are above some. God does not treat the devil as equal. You see, when Jesus gave us authority in Luke 10 19, he said, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. He jammed all of them. He doesn't have time to differentiate whether they are principalities or he put them all. He said, and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies of you. Because you have that authority to trample them under your feet. But you cannot operate in the three dimension and have that authority. You must allow yourself to enter into the spirit and the Holy Spirit is manifesting to you. Then you are above everything. And you speak about something they come to pass. You command things and they happen. That is when the blessings of God just rest upon you. You begin to walk in the blessings. You don't have to get in the morning and say, God, how are we eating today? You just thank God because you have eaten, even though there is no food in your house. Can't you understand the way Jesus prayed? 5,000 people were sitting in front of him. He said, do we have food to feed them? They said, oh, the money we have, even if we spend the whole church money, we can't feed this people. Send them away. Philip told him, let them go. Jesus said, no, they have to eat. And Philip said, where can we get bread to feed these people? He was praying. He said, make them sit down. And they sat They didn't know what he was doing. He said, anybody have food here? And the small boy that his father or his brother packaged, but he said, when you go to that program, when they are preaching and it's too long, just go by the corner and eat. The boy donated his bread. Five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus took it. The Bible says, He said, Father, I thank you for feeding this food. The people are still not eating. They are not eating any food. They are still sitting down. But he was already thanking God because everybody is fed. That is how you pray, how you talk. The Bible says, He broke the bread. And He said, Bring 12 baskets. I want to show you the key now. When He was taking bread and putting it in the 12 basket, the bread did not grow. Because the bread would have swallowed him and the disciples. They were still carrying pieces of bread. He put 12 pieces in 12 baskets. And he caught the fish and put 12 pieces in 12 baskets. And he said, give to them. And if you are the disciple and you are carrying just some few pieces of bread and fish, and they say, God, give to the people. You will stand and say, Master, this thing cannot go anywhere. But they move by faith. As the people were taking, the bread was replaced. The bread did not get full in the basket. But they wouldn't have lifted it. It's as they take. It was not finishing. As they take, there was still bread. As they were taking, the bread was still there. People were taking. There was bread always in the basket. As they were taking bread and fish, it was replaced. As they were taking, it was replaced. Yeah. By the time everybody took, he said, gather the leftover. Yeah. Twelve baskets was still there. Yeah. Oh, that, 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 that. Oh, yeah. He started with twelve baskets. He finished and there was still twelve baskets.
In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, Father. For every day is a day of miracles. 24 hours from now, you shall be receiving miracles. Signs and wonders will begin to follow you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. It is done. Put your hands together for Jesus. You can receive the Amen. Thank you, Jesus.